Hey there, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, we're going to create a React application using FFmpeg to be able to render videos on the client side and create videos from a video image and video audio. So this is the project we're going to create is you have a spot to upload a photo, for example, and then a spot to upload your image audio or your video audio. And so I have some audio here and you can create a video from just the MP3 in the image and nothing else. And so this uses FFmpeg to render the video on your own computer and create it. So as you'll see here, I have a basic video with some piano music that plays and it creates an actual video that you're even able to download to your own computer. So this is the basic idea of the project. Let's get started. All right, so let's get into the system we're going to make to create this project. We're going to make a React website that has an upload for an MP3 and an upload for a photo. These two buttons can just be input tags with file upload, and we can handle the actual content of what gets uploaded by using React states. When we press the create video from MP3 and video, this is where the FFmpeg logic comes in. And so we want to use two things. We want to add the mp3 and photo to our ffmpeg file system and then we want to use ffmpeg commands to create that output video file then after we use those commands we're going to have a created video and then we're going to want to show the user our completed video and we can just use a simple video html tag for that all right let's get into it we can get started by opening up a blank folder in visual studio code opening up the terminal and then as always with your react projects we're going to do an npx create dash react dash app and then the name of whatever app we want to call it i'm just going to call it client for this video so once that gets finished up you're going to want to cd into your client you're going to have your boilerplate react code as you expect but just to make sure you don't have any issues we can do an npm start to just see that we can run this project on localhost 3000 your npm start should show something like this and so let's go into the source slash app.js here so we can go over to the source folder then we're going to go over to app.js as always, I'm going to delete the entire header object because we don't need any of the boilerplate code for this React application. Make sure that your React app actually changed to those new changes. It should be completely white, and that means you're good to go. Okay, so now you can close up that npm start, and we're going to go back to the terminal. What we're going to want to do is npm install at ffmpeg slash ffmpeg. This is gonna give us access to all the ffmpeg functions that we need and give us access to all that functionality so we can use actual ffmpeg functions inside of our JavaScript. So we can delete this first logo import because we don't need that anymore. And we're gonna add in some imports of our own. The first one is going to be import use state from React. This is gonna be super important for when we want to handle uploading the actual files and how to kind of contain files and doing file uploads through React. Use state is super helpful. Then we're also going to import some necessary FFmpeg functionality so we can actually use FFmpeg within React. So it's gonna be create FFmpeg and make sure your capitalization is like this, by the way, two capital Fs. And then you want to make sure it's fetch file is the other one. And then that's going to be from at FFmpeg slash FFmpeg. And uh, if I had a dollar for every single time I said FFmpeg this video, I would be rich. Now that we have the imports out of the way, we can make that basic functionality for uploading files. So I'm just going to make a comment here, upload file functionality. The first thing we're going to want to do is to create a state to hold a file object. So we can say const image file, for example. And when you have a state, it's going to be the actual state itself and then the function that sets the state. So then it's going to be set image file and you're going to say equal to use state and we're going to set it equal to an empty object. We're setting it equal to an empty object initially because when someone uploads a file through an actual input in HTML, it's going to be a file object. So that's why we set our use states to an empty object initially. We can copy this state over and make a sound file and set sound file because uh, sound files work the exact same way. Even though it's a picture versus sound, it still recognizes a file in our JavaScript. All right, so inside of our return statement, we can make that first input button to handle one of those. So we can say input type is equal to file. So this is like file uploads, for example. ID, I'm gonna set this one equal to the image. And I want the files it's going to accept to be under images. So pretty much all the different types of images you would ex expect to accept. Then on change, I want to do something like handle change image. This allows us to create a function that we're going to make here to change the state of our JavaScript to whatever file that got uploaded. So let's create that handle change image. So we can go up here and create a const handle change image is equal to, we want the event from the button getting clicked. And that's incredibly important because this event is where that uploaded file is going to go. And we're gonna say const file is equal to e.target 
dot files and so this is can be an array of files but we all, we only want to accept the first file we're expecting the user to upload just one thing and so this actually grabs us the file object itself and so if i console.log file and then we do npm start here then we inspect element we go to our console we choose a file as you'll see, this is the actual file object I'm talking about. So JavaScript has this object, its type is image slash PNG, its name is social network.png, and this is the file that FFmpeg actually wants to use. When you use the fetch file from the FFmpeg library, it can take in a couple different things, but one of the things it can take in is an actual file object itself. So if we keep these file objects within a React state, we can use them whenever we need to use these certain files for FFmpeg. And setting the state is super simple. You guys think this might be complicated, right? But it's super simple. So since we're changing the actual image, we're gonna set the image file equal to this file object itself. So initially our state is an empty object, but now we're saying, hey, take that file that's showing up in our files and the person uploaded and then set this image file function to the actual file itself. So now we have access to that file throughout our entire React application, which is super cool. And the great thing about this is nothing else changes when it comes to doing the handle change of the sound file as well. So let's get into that. This isn't great practice, but this also isn't a UI tutorial. I'm just gonna make a little paragraph tag in between these two inputs I'm going to create just so we have a little bit of space between them. Now we can copy over this input and we're instead of accepting an image, we are going to accept a sound file. And we also want to set that ID to sound in case we ever want to use that. And we're going to instead say handle change of the sound instead. And so now we can copy over our handle change image, bring it over here, make it handle change sound. And the actual file uploading itself is going to be relatively similar. We're going to say take that file and then set the sound file. So if I console.log this file when we're uploading the sound, you guys will see that JavaScript doesn't see this as a sound file or an image file or anything like that. So we can go over to our React application, we can choose a file, we can choose the sound, and as you guys will see, of course it recognizes it as a type of audio MPEG, for example, but it's still a file object at the end of the day. And so the actual, you know, set state process is very similar. One thing that's worth getting out of the way is making another state to handle the actual video source. So when we want to end up showing our user that video we create, it kind of has to go somewhere and we have to make a video object or a video tag in our HTML. And that video tag is gonna have a source and it's pretty much shows whatever video its source is set equal to. So we can use React states to handle that video source being set. And this is just going to be a string. So no complicated object stuff here. And this will probably make more sense is I can go down here and I can say, okay, we have a video in our HTML. We can set its source equal to the video source value. So that's the value coming from that state. And then we're also gonna just do controls, which is just a pretty simple HTML thing. I'm also gonna add a line break at the end here so we have some space between our buttons in the video so if you go back to your actual react application you'll see your video has shown up it's not going to show anything right now which is totally fine because it has no source its source is being set to an empty string and when we do the ffmpeg stuff i will show you guys how to set that video source then for our react application ffmpeg needs to be initialized itself they make it super simple in the documentation so you say const ffmpeg is equal to that create ffmpeg function we have above. It has a couple of optional parameters. One of the ones we can use here is log is equal to true. This means whenever your video is rendering or whenever you have any ffmpeg logic going on, it will show console logs of what's happening. So it'll show like what frames are being rendered, how long the render is going to take, stuff like that. And so this allows us to actually do things like call ffmpeg dot. And as you'll see, we have access to all of the ffmpeg functions. All right, so now we can make a simple button here and I'm gonna do another paragraph to make some padding. And so we can make a simple button where when we click it, we want to run a create video function, which is going to be the main part of this application. And so we'll just say create a video from the things above. And so now we can actually get into working on that create video FFmpeg stuff. Okay, so now we can get started creating this create video function. So we can say const create video is equal to an asynchronous function. We're doing this because some of the FFmpeg related things are gonna use await. So we have to make this function asynchronous, which you do like this. First things first, we're going to say await ffmpeg.load. And the reason why this is an await statement is because ffmpeg.load can take a second. So we have to wait for that thing to actually get fully loaded and then we can have ffmpeg logic under it. The first ffmpeg logic we're going to get into is saying ffmpeg.filesystem, which they make fs, and we're going to use the write file. 
So write file is super important for having FFmpeg itself recognize the files you're using. And so it doesn't just look at your regular, you know, directories or folders within your computer. It needs to say, hey, FFmpeg, this is a file I want to use for the actual video creation stuff. And so here you go, I'm gonna give you the file directly. And so we can do this by setting the name of the file to whatever we want, honestly. So we can say image.png, since I'm using a PNG for this example. And I'm gonna say await fetch file image. And so this, or sorry, fetch file from our image file state. And so fetch file is super interesting because this actually grabs that image object and FFmpeg, this is valid for it. This says grab this file and then set it equal to image.png. And so if we have any other FFmpeg logic under this and we use image.png, it's going to reference whatever this await fetch file returns. So in our example, it's gonna give us whatever image file we have set there. Something super important is I'm using a PNG specifically for this. And so you wanna make sure that you use a .png or use a .jpg or whatever. There's logic to change this name to like, you know, whatever the file type is, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. Uh, just to make it simple on yourself, I would recommend just using the PNGs and then an MP3 kind of like I'm using so you don't run into any issues. Now we can copy this entire line, bring it over and do a very similar thing for our sound. So we can say sound.mp3 and you guys will see this. This name can be whatever you want as long as you continue to use it for our other FFmpeg code. But it's going to be sound.mp3. Remember, sound is still a file, so we're still going to use that write file. Instead of fetching the file from the image file, we want to fetch it from the sound file we created. Now we're going to get into actually running the FFmpeg command necessary to take an image file and a sound file and create a video as a result of it. I am just going to copy over this thing. So I know this isn't best practice, but the way FFmpeg has these commands run is super long and kind of hard to understand. So I'm gonna put this in the description so you guys can also copy this over, but look into it yourself if you wanna understand what's happening. The basic idea is the frame rate's really low because we don't wanna render a lot of frames and it's just an image standing there so you don't really need a lot of frames right and you take in an input of an image file and a sound file and then pretty much it goes through some things where you know i don't really know what the pixel format is or what the c to v thing is i think it's like content to video or something don't quote me on that and then the t is going to be 10 seconds long and so as you guys will see this is always going to be a 10 second long video if you want to do code that says oh my mp3 is two minutes long i want to make the video two minutes you have to do some jquery stuff that i would advise you look into and i might even make another video on that because it's not as easy as it seems unfortunately there is no like react.get video length thing so it kind of sucks an important thing here is we scale the video to 1920 by 1080p and then the most important thing is we output this entire video of all these different commands, we output it as test.mp4. And that's what we really care about, is at the end of the day, in our FFmpeg file system, we now have a test.mp4 we can reference. And so since we know test.mp4 exists, it makes it super simple for us. So we can get the data out of that by saying const data is equal to ffmpeg.filesystem. Now we're gonna use the read file instead of the write file. And we're gonna say, hey, grab that test.mp4 that we just created. Now this data is our actual video. So that's pretty cool. This is a real video, we can watch it, we can see it and all this stuff. And so the way we can watch it in React is by setting that video source I created above. So the actual source of the video down here is gonna be set equal to this MP4 file that we created. And we have to do some strange stuff here that you don't really need to understand entirely. So we're gonna URL.create object URL. And then we have to do like a data blob which is pretty funny that they call it that. And then you have to go to the data.buffer, which is a property from this data object we're grabbing from the file system. Then we're also gonna say this data is of type video slash mp4. And you guys don't have to understand all that because it's more just necessary to see how the video gets sent to our front end. So this is all we really need to do with the create video logic. A super important thing that I forgot to mention before is that React does not support the latest version of this ffmpeg slash ffmpeg library. It literally says in the console to set it to this caret 0.9.8. So make sure you set it to this version and then you npm install again, or else you're gonna get a bunch of FFmpeg errors where I believe if you see create FFmpeg core is not defined, if you're getting that error, that means you're using a version that's too far in the future that's not really supported for React yet. So be on the lookout for that, make it 0.9.8 and you should be good to go. With that said, 
we now have a fully working application that's actually going to take images, take sounds, and then create a video. So let's go back to our application and see this working. So we can go to our file, upload our PNG file. We can go into here and then upload our test.mp3 and then create a video from the things above. You should see your console going kind of crazy. That's what you expect because we have that log equals true option when we initialize the FFmpeg and you should see the actual video get created and it should play the mp3 and should do all that different type of stuff as you would expect. And this is pretty much the full application. You have FFmpeg running, and the most important part of this that's super cool is that you have it running on the user's computer. It's taking WebAssembly code and it's rendering a video on their computer. So there are a bunch of different applications when it comes to this. You can create custom content that someone could then use, and then you know, you render it on the user's computer and maybe use the YouTube API and upload a video for them. You can like automate content. You can, you know, splice together videos. With this type of boilerplate, you're more limited by your actual FFmpeg skill than you are your JavaScript skill, for example. And FFmpeg itself is a whole different skill set that you kind of have to research weird solutions. You have to look into things like codecs, which you might not be familiar with as like a software, you know, engineer, like I'm not. This is just a good video for kind of understanding how the whole system overall works. If this video was helpful and helping you understand how FFmpeg works, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to make another video in the future where we take these videos that we create, these test mp4s and then use the youtube api to upload them for a certain user so if you're interested in that make sure to subscribe and thanks for watching